What up, everybody? I'm Rosario Dawson. And I'm Adam Rodriguez. What's happening? <laughs> Today, we welcome a new dawn of television programming. That's right. I'm sure you've all heard of Urban Latino, the magazine. And we're here to bring you the first episode of Urban's brand new television show. So join us for the next half hour as we take you on a virtual tour of our diverse culture. We tell the stories of Latino experience in this country from all perspectives. That's right. And uh, on today's show, we have exclusive interviews with today's hottest Latino soap opera stars. And they're going to be talking with us about making that crossover into the mainstream. And that's not all. We're also going to take a peek look at urban fashions from Latin-owned designer lines, Willie Esco and Republica Trading Company. So lay in the cut and let us bring it to you. Urban Latino style. The journey that I would say that brought me from listening to the music that my mom, you know, schooled me on, hanging out with it, going to high school, junior high school, going to parties, singing in the streets, you know, different singers like, oh, you can sing, yeah, go ahead. I'm like, no, 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 after you, go ahead. And then I opened my mouth. Most of the music, like R&B, I'll give an example. It's, it's straight up like, uh -huh. That's not what Clave does. Clave goes like this, boom, ba, ba, sukut, ba, ba. And it doesn't start on the first beat, it starts on the second beat, so you're going one. One. Puede destrozar todo aquel. I mean, the clave even forms uh, structures, how you're supposed to dance on it. And a conguero by the name of Papo Pepin, he taught me that when I was dancing on stage doing it. He's like, what are you doing, man? What is that? No, no, no. Esto que va. Something called masacote you gotta have in there. I mean, there's so many things that come into the music that took a lot of years. It took a lot of years for me to understand that. James the Barber and Fragancia. We hit it off. Because James is a very, very comfortable, he's a very, very comfortable person and he's very funny. A Fragancia we met at Sergio's studio when it was in the city. Thing. So he's like, well, I could flip it. I could flip it this way, that way, blah, blah, blah. I could, whatever you want, I could do it. DOG is a very strong foundation for me, for James, and for Fragancia to go out and do other different things. Nothing quite like the feeling of hearing 80,000 people singing a song with you. Or when they put their hand up like this and sing, It's about just Latinos in general, that together, all together, there's not that much difference. Because I feel at home in any Latin American country I go to. You know what, what I'm doing every day, no matter what stress I go through, it stands for something very important. And I tend to touch a lot of people's lives and I make people think, you know what, sigue pa'lante. That boy can sing. Hi everyone, my name is Desiree, and today we're here on Fifth Avenue and 25th Street in New York City. As you can see, Latinos are everywhere. Our culture has inspired artists to venture into various fields lately. Today, we are going to take you on a journey of two young fashion designers on their quest to conquer the world. So let's have a look at our urban style. I was. Um trying to get an angle on urban because it was the market was flooded even back then and you had to come out with a unique angle as a consumer I would go into the stores and see no Latin product no one that represented being Latin at the store level I just started developing my line and started putting things together like um, using my my Spanglish phrases and my stuff and and logos that uh, included uh, icons in Puerto Rico like Morro. You know, you're either Tommy or you're the other, another African-American line. And I was Latin, and I thought it'd be, it's good timing, one, and um, it's about time that someone tries to do it. We're a Latin company, but 
we also represent hip hop, you know, so why not have the best of both worlds? Well, it wouldn't be great if I can get Nas. We just walk through our doors, you know, wondering what we were doing. And, um, I, you know, I was just, we sat down, we talked. And once he found out what we were doing, he respected that. Urban styles is many different things. I mean, just walk in New York, how many different styles do you see from the time that you get on the train at home to the stop that you get off on? The way the public I got started was that I was riding the trains and I saw, it was like during the summertime and I saw a lot of, you know, tacky designs centered around, you know, the Dominican Day Parade or the, the Puerto Rican Day Parade or the Cuban Day Parade. I'd seen stuff on the train. And one day I was like, you know what? I wonder if I did a real simple design, you know, how would it do? Um, so it just happened that the Dominican Day Parade was coming up, so I did a shirt um, that said Dominican Republic, real, real simple, real simple lettering. And, uh, and a couple of friends of mine were like, yo, that's not gonna sell, man, Dominicans don't want it, yada, yada, yada. So then I took a dozen shirts in white and I put them in my knapsack and I started walking around my neighborhood and I sold literally a dozen shirts in 20 minutes for $20 a pop. I was just like, hmm, maybe I have something here. I, I go out of my way to create um, designs and create a line that has some sort of soul to it, you know, that has meaning to it as opposed to just, all right, let me slap a label on it and that's it. Republica has everything to do with cultural pride, um, not only for Latinos, but people of multicultural descent. That's the reason I started the line because I wanted to represent the underrepresented. Hey, want more information about Urban Latino? Well, log on at www.urbanlatino.com to see what we're all about. Here you can find out more about our culture, the Latino movement, and much, much more. So let's get on the information superhighway towards urbanlatino.com. Bueno, it's time for Bochinche. We're about to let you in on some down and dirty gossip on the stars. No me diga, Ricky Martin on the silver screen? Yup, apparently Oliver Stone wants him to play the lead role in his next movie about Chiapas. Ricky as subcomandante Marcos. This we gotta see. Wanna know who's been seen walking hands in hand with Tommy Mottola from Sony? Thalia herself. Did somebody say, yo quiero un crossover career? Now Salma Hayek's career is on the hot seat. She apparently was quoted as saying that Jennifer Lopez isn't Latina enough. Excuse me. According to Ms. Hayek, she was remarking on her versatility. Ouch. All right, let's go back to La Isla del Encanto, where Mark Anthony has proposed to Miss Puerto Rico herself, Dianara. Sorry, girls, he's officially taken now. But Olga Tanyong isn't anymore. The bomba is that El Pelotero Juan Gonzalez is getting divorced from the diva herself. The word is that he's having a love child with another woman. Could you believe that? I hear that Olga Tanyong is a very tough woman to be with, but you did not have to do her like that. Well, there you have it, the latest pochinche. Urban Latino has been brought to you today by Mountain Dew. Do the do. Welcome back to Urban Latino. Have you ever wondered why we're always casted as junkies and waiters on television? Well, we interviewed some Latino actors who have opened up opportunities for us on the big screen. So get tuned into LTV. I'm at the Soho Studio shooting Urban Latino, the cover for Latins in Hollywood. It's pretty cool because you can see a lot of other artists, artists that you don't get to see a lot. You should see them on TV or you hear the music or you know, a lot of them on the other coast and we're all here, so it's kind of nice. It's basically about 12 uh, Latino artists who work in all segments of the industry. And it's just represent the Latinas in 1999. There were times I remember I'd go on auditions and I'd be told, you're not ethnic looking enough. I'd say, okay, all right, sure. And then I go on another audition, they say, you know, you're too ethnic looking. Now, I'm good friends with an all-American at my agency, and, uh, you know, we, we're compatible in looks, but in different fields. And he goes out for auditions 10 times a week, and I get maybe three a month. You get Italians playing Latinos. Como se llama? Antonio Montano. People playing Asians that aren't Asian or, or you know. Ridiculous. It's not normal to have this, this show with an all-American cast when in real life you know that in all-American families there's always going to be a Hispanic friend or a black friend or a Chinese friend. It's not about color. It's not about money. It's not about fame. It's about who you are inside. It's about your culture. You should be proud of that. 
Hollywood will, will try to hold up one person and they'll say, this is a Latino, this is a, this is a Puerto Rican. If you don't look like this, you're not Puerto Rican. This is a Mexican. If you don't look like this, you're not Mexican. This is a Ecuadorian. If you don't look like this, you're not Ecuadorian. You know, they, and they can't do that. That's the problem in Hollywood. They don't realize that one person does, doesn't represent the whole culture. I think the amount of talented Latinos has always been around. I mean, we are there, we are passionate people. Everything we do, we put our heart into it, our soul. We're tasty, we've got a flavor. I mean, there's nothing hard to sell about us. I think Hollywood is really good about setting trends and they finally decided that we're a great market to focus on and they're doing it. Part of me said, listen, if we want to be on TV, if we want our movies being shot, then we got to step up, we got to write it. We gotta get the Latinos behind us, have money to produce it. And we gotta make our own stuff. Why wait around for everybody else to give us stuff? I'm glad that finally we're like scratching, like, you know, we're coming through. People are noticing, Dang, these people are good. It's up to us to make it happen. 2000 is gonna be off the hook. Get ready because you're gonna see a whole bunch of stuff you've never seen before. Hi everyone, we're here today with Aldo Marin at Cutting Record Studios here in New York City. How did Cutting Records come about? Cutting started in 83. Uh, we were doing a lot of dance, uh, electro, it was called electro at that time. From electro we moved into freestyle in the mid 80s and now we're doing a lot of uh, Latin mix of a lot of uh, different flavors, you know, merengue, uh, house, and rap all mixed together. All that combined into what we have today, which is a big mixture of the dance music and the Latin music fused together. That's what we do a lot with Sancocho, uh, Tumba La Casa, and all that stuff. We had a Drago by two in a room, you know, Fulanito, and their, their mixture of the original merengue accordion with the merengue of today. Um, did your parents have an influence on your love for music or your oh, desire? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my house, there was always music. My background is Cuban, and they do... Uh, Cuban rumba? Yeah, they listen to charanga, <laughs> yeah. to Oqueta Broadway. <laughs> How does it make you feel knowing that uh, people love your music and it, they really appreciate it and it does make them happy? Oh, I, I mean, that's one of my favorite things when I know, you know, they play one of our records and it just puts smile on people's faces or it's a funny thing. So you're definitely making an impact. Hello, hello everyone. My name is Huey Dunbar, and we're at the end of the show, but I'd like to